Hey, what is going on, guys? Root of the Null here, coming back at you with another Python tutorial. I'm gonna start up idle. I'm gonna create a new script here. Save this as a uh, file.python. Get my shebang line started. I'm gonna create a new class. Call this one base. Define a constructor. Pass in the self keyword. Break out of our class and test in the global scope if the name of our script is equal to main, or in other words, if this is the current script we are running or this isn't included, we're going to create an object or an instance of our base class. So now what we're going to do here is, uh, is move on. <laughs> now, recently we've been looking at uh, string variables, and we've been trying to see the functions that we can call with, these, with this data type. We've been looking at uh, converting the string to uppercase, converting the string to lowercase. Uh, we've been swapping the case around. We've been testing whether or not it's all lowercase or all uppercase inside that string, and that sort of thing. But now we're going to move on to, uh, to list data types, or like arrays. We're going to be looking at those from now on. So I'm going to go ahead and create one. I'm going to say self.array. I'm gonna call mine array because if I use list, oh, it's not gonna it's not gonna highlight for me because it's not just plain old list. But we can okay. I'm, I'm gonna call mine self dot list because <laughs> I think that looks good. And uh, inside our list, we can have the values of this is a. I'm gonna put in here list. And now I'm gonna print this out. So I'm gonna print out self dot list. And usually we have been concatenating on some new line characters. Now remember you can only concatenate with other string variables. So I'm going to convert this list to a string with our str function. And we can display this. So now we have this is a string when we run our program. So let's take a look at what we're going to be checking out today. Um, there is a function that you can call with your list data types that is called append. And what this function will do is, uh, is a little operation that we've been doing a lot recently, and it's appending onto the end of the array. So if we had uh, our array or our list here called uh, this is a list, or at least with the values this is a list, what it will do is it will add on another value at the end here. And that's what append is called. That's, I mean, that's the definition of append. It will add something on at the end. So if we try this, what we can do is we can uh, print self.list, and then we can append on, and then our value, or at least the value that we pass to it, will be added on the end of the list. So we can use like right here, we can have a question, and if we, if we run this, we're going to get none. And this is because our function here, list.append, does not have a return type, it returns none by default. In fact, that's just the way it, it happens. Because what it's doing here is it's actually modifying the original list, self.list. So if we don't we don't even have to print this out. But if we go ahead and print out our list again, self.list, you can see that it's been modified and has this right string at the end of it. So it's actually modifying the real argument that we passed to it. So if we if we try and do this on our own, I'm going to have it return to us the actual array. So uh and uh, you'll see what I mean. Let's get the function started anyway. I'm going to call mine append. I'm going to pass in self, array, and append this. In our case, append this is what we're going to be appending. So now we can set up array. We can add on to it with our assignment operators, plus equals. And inside of our brackets here, or these braces, so we know that it's a data type of, of, an, of, a, of an array, or of a list, sorry. I'm tripping all over my words here. And we're going to put inside the value of append this, or what it is that we planned on appending. And then when we're done, we can just simply return array. So now if we run this, we can print self.append, and we can pass in self.list, and we can add on right, just like we did before. And now you can see this is a list with right here at the end. If we run this after we had appended it with the original function, though, Remember, now that it's adding this, uh, now that it originally adds this right up here, we have a, we have two rights because we've done it with our function and with the one up there. So let's let's comment out the first one, the default built-in function, and let's take a look at our our new our new list all by itself. We can do print out self dot list, and now you can see it still has right on there. It's actually it actually has modified the original variable because we're taking what we've passed in here and we're actually adding on to it inside the array. 
inside of the function anyway. We can fix this though. What we can do is we can set a new array and we can set that equal to the value of array that we've been passed and then we can modify new array. New array plus equals append this and we can return that new array. So if we run this, we still have that same output. That's strange. But you know, it looks like it's only doing this because we've set new array equal to the value of the original array. So it looks like it's still working with what we've passed to it. But what if we what if we sort of change this around a bit? What if we returned array plus and then the value of append this? So we're adding them together, but we aren't modifying anything really. So if we run this, we get this is a list, right? And then we have this is a list. So it's true, we aren't changing any of the variables, we're just sort of displaying both of them. So you can really work around with this. There are a lot of interesting code techniques and tactics that you can do here without having to have to modify the original variable and we're using this equal sign that assignment operator. So uh, this one could be a little bit more complex depending on how you look at it, especially understanding the way variables are passed to functions. But hey, <laughs> I hope you guys understand the idea or you can at least comprehend what we're doing here. And yeah, I hope to be seeing you guys in the next tutorial. Adios.